Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. In this video, we'll be looking into the paper that talks about using large pre-trained language models for doing next item recommendation in a zero-shot fashion. So let's break down the terminologies that are mentioned in this title. The first is next item recommendation. So next item recommendation is nothing but a sequential recommendation problem where let's say if you are on a e-commerce website so one kind of recommendation that they can have on your screen is based on your past purchases let's say this is something that you bought this is something again that you bought then what could be the next thing that they can recommend to you so let's take a concrete example so for example if you bought an iphone and then you bought the adapter for this then probably they might recommend you a screen guard or something of that sort right it won't be a clothing brand that they're going to recommend because the past sequence of your purchase doesn't really define like you're going to get onto something different. So that's the idea of next item recommendation. This is one kind of recommendation that you'll often see in e-commerce web pages. It's already implemented apart from typical collaborative filtering and related systems. Okay, so the next is zero shot. So zero shot again is a terminology that we often use when, when we are using some pre-trained models. And the idea is that the pre-trained model hasn't seen anything related to what you're going to ask next so based on whatever knowledge it has it has to generalize and get onto the prediction to what you're asking for so in case you give two to three examples in case of let's say chat gpt that becomes too short or few short learning but in zero shot you directly put in the question and you expect an answer without showing the model some similar examples so yeah that's the idea so let's move on to a diagram that they have where they showcase what's the difference between a zero shot reasoner versus zero shot recommender systems if you're using let's say gpt3 which is frozen you're not tuning or tweaking any of the parameters for it so let's say if you ask a question sandy grew six carrots sam grew three carrots how many carrots did they grow in total and you give a hint saying the answer arabic numeral is and then is what you expect your model to output something that's meaningful and let's say it says nine which is correct, right? So this is an example of zero shot reasoner where the model is trying to understand the flow of things that you have written and add up relevant objects to get to the final answer. Now, what is zero shot recommender? Because that's something new if you're talking about LLMs, right? Because this kind of thing you must have seen, you must have seen typical classification. But when you talk about LLM based recommendation system, that's something new. So let's say this is the example. So now what we asked to the model is based on the movies I have watched, including these, can you recommend 10 movies for me? So the output that the model generates is it tries to understand the requirement and then it generates those 10 movies, which again makes sense, right? But then the question is, why aren't we satisfied with this approach and what else do we need to do? So if you understand recommendation system, you would know that the first step often is to get to the candidate recommendations and then reshuffle, reorganize, select a few and then eventually come up with, okay, these are your top three recommendations. So now coming up with candidate recommendations from large pool of recommendation is often done using user, user similarity, user item similarity kind of a methods. But for chat GPT or any other LLM now, this is the space that it's dealing with and coming up with. 10 recommendations from this space directly is a big task, right? So for that, you often experience poor recommendations that come out if you directly use such prompts. So in this paper, authors propose a principled approach where they break down the entire LLM based recommendation system into three step prompt strategy. So let's look into what that is. They have a pretty good figure that explains all of it. Yeah. So let's go through this figure one by one. So now here the first step is let's say this is your test user and this is his history of purchases. And you have bunch of users on your platform for which again you have this history of purchases and this is the new user that has come up and you want to tell what should be the next item that this guy should buy. So the first step as I said is to reduce your search space or recommendation space by applying either user-based filtering or item-based filtering where again, the difference between both of them is pretty simple and intuitive. So let's say if this is P1, this is P2, this is P3, these are three people, and this is your inference one or the test one. This is your I1, 
i2 and i3 and let's say you had p1 had purchased like i1 i2 p2 had just i2 for p3 he has already purchased i2 now you want to tell him what's the next thing he should buy so you calculate the similarity between user profiles which is p1 p2 p1 p3 p2 p3 and let's say p1 p3 are found to be very similar so the next thing that you're going to recommend to this person is i1 so this is user based filtering the second is item based filtering where again we draw the same example p1 p2 p3 i1 i2 and i3 and and this time let's consider the interactions being this 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 he goes this and and this and p3 goes through i3 now the next item that you want to recommend to p3 for item based filtering is that you calculate the similarity between all these elements and let's say it says i1 is most similar to i3 so now i1 is something that you're going to recommend to p3 so that's the entire idea this was user based this was item based so using any of them you try to get on to reducing let's say from 100 or 1000 items that you could have probably recommended you are now to let's say 20 items that you'll be recommending and figuring out what should be the sequence and how many to finally recommend so the first step and three step prompting strategy is to identify the user preference so for example if this is what you found as a part of filtering process and you gave your input saying these are the movies that i've watched and your main query is what is the next movie that you should be watching so in step one you write saying what features are most important to me when selecting movies summarize my preferences so here you're trying to get to the statement that kind of summarizes the genre the kind of style these movies have so that eventually if you use this information for doing prompting in the later stages the model gets tweaked a little in terms of how it's going to pick up things from the candidate set and this is what the model gives right it says i prefer action-packed movies with a good story and interesting characters i also enjoy comedy and thrillers so it's trying to get the common parts yet retaining the diversity based on its pre-trained information that it has around all these movies so now you expand your sliding window where you now give all of this to the model asking you to select at most five movies that appeal to me the most from the list of movies that i've watched and the selected movies will be presented in descending order of the preference and this is the format how you should be giving me the output so it basically rearranges your watched movies based on the understanding of what is now the definition of a preference so you saw right it's a pretty clever way of asking gpt first to define what the preference is you're not directly giving it out because you don't know what's important when you define preference variable so you're asking the model out based on these what is the preference and okay now if this is a preference re-rank all the movies based on that and this is what it generates and as a part of final and third step you pass in all the previous steps that you have generated which is written over here and you're given the new prompt for step three that says can you recommend 10 movies from the candidate set similar to the selected movies I have watched? And this is the format how you should be giving me the movies. And as expected, this is the final output that the model gives, adhering to the format that was asked for, where if this is the movie that you have watched, then the next movie that you should see is The Rock. Cool. So I think, yeah, it's a pretty good experiment to try out how LMs behave when asked to do recommendations. So on experiments, what the author found was on the movie lens data set on full training versus the zero shot version of it clearly the simple prompting where we didn't do this chaining of thoughts cool so if you don't do that if you do the simple prompting that we saw initially scores are bad as compared to the to the supervised methods that were trained on the full data whereas their implementation which is this one is close enough to the full training methods even when inferred in a zero shot setting so this NIR stands for next item recommendation, single and multi different states wherein they send in all the prompts at once by combining or concatenating them. Whereas multi is multi turn wherein you get the answer, then you create the next prompt, you get that answer as well and so on. And IF is 
item filter you is user filter so yeah the best performance that we can see is this where you're doing multi-turn calls to your LM by creating a candidate set that was user filtered cool so that is it for this video if you like the content make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel also do share it across the friends to whosoever is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care